Hey everyone, Ursh here, founder of the Flow Ninja Agency. And in this video, we're gonna be going over on how you can start your next Webflow project with Flow Starter. So, after working for about five years in Webflow, we started to get into a really unique way, I would say, in working and naming classes in Webflow. After working with many enterprise clients like Upwork and kind of many more um, in our agency, we realized that you need a real system to build proper Webflow websites and to scale them to 1,000, 2,000 plus pages in the end. I'm gonna say that we did not invent everything that is in the style guide. You know, we've taken many inspirations from other agencies like Edgar Allen, like FinSuite. They've been uh, kind of a huge inspiration in kind of making this final uh, kind of composition of our uh, class naming system. And I do recommend that you go ahead and kind of see all of the possible ways you can scale your Webflow project and take bits and pieces for every single one of them and create in the end maybe a, a, your design system. That is of course if you're kind of more on an advanced level on Webflow, but if you're just a beginner, I would say kind of find like what you like, kind of maybe like ours, maybe like theirs and just stick to that. Scale your Webflow knowledge in the end kind of with that system itself. A natural flow in general when thinking of building kind of Webflow systems uh, as Webflow we do think is a development tool and not a design tool is maybe going to BEM and using BEM class naming system on that side. I do feel like that some agencies might benefit from that. On our side, we're having the templates, we're having free resources that not really experts are going to be using in the end, but they are still going to need to adjust every single item in the template, they're going to need to adjust the free resource, etc, etc. So jumping into a project that has BEM class naming is just gonna, not gonna be pretty easy for them. For enterprise clients, honestly, kind of, we're usually kind of managing everything on our side, just because we have full-time people just working on that. But even in, in on their end, when there is a small fix they wanna do, they have their marketing team go ahead and do it. Or if it's a smaller client, even a client directly is going in, into the website and doing it. And with BEM, it's not gonna be super easy for them to understand what they're changing, why they're changing it, and just gonna use the system in the end. So, who's this concept for? Well, I would say that even our agency wouldn't be here if there weren't kind of the best possible tutorials created from Webflow with all the funny jokes and everything and kind of grimmer making all the kind of tiny additions to every single one of the courses. And that is exactly why we are here. But this is a great real world example of how Webflow is being used and then kind of how you can use it on your own. So this was built, as I said, for our clients. This was built for our Flow Ninja Unlimited customers. This is built for beginners. If you don't have a style like you're following from the beginning, it's gonna be great to clone this for completely for free and start using it in the future. This is made for our team internally as we're scaling to like 15 plus people at the moment in the agency and everybody is full time and in-house. We need a way to go ahead and kind of know that if somebody is sick, somebody else can j jump into the project. If somebody is going to maybe off for a vacation and there is a change that we need to do, we need to know that all of our all our projects are built exactly the same and that we can continue following the system uh, kind of project per project. And of course, in the end, kind of for Webflow experts, uh, kind of um, like our fellow Webflow experts, is it's going to be great to jump in and see how we're doing things, maybe implement something in your workflow, and of course, go ahead and kind of give feedback and ask kind of why we're doing some things like we're doing. Them. I would say the greatest thing about the Flow Starter is that it kind of goes over the whole process of Webflow development. So as we're also a design agency and then a Webflow development agency, we have a great system where, which I think is unique on uh, migrating content from kind of Figma. And here is a Figma overview where you can see everything. You can see the headings. You can see the global utility classes for colors. You can see the global utility classes for texts, for alignment, setting up the global paddings, setting up global margins, max width, setting up the buttons, input fields, and just basically everything that's gonna make or break your REPL project is in Figma. And if you're only developing, this can be a great thing you can take in and make your kind of client or the agency you're collaborating with on, on design go ahead and fill in and standardize their designs in order to make it a lot easier for you to scale your Webflow project. Sometimes clients here or maybe design agencies we're working with don't have time to go ahead and fill this in. So we're going to be taking over the design and just uh, telling them, okay, we're, we need to standardize the project. We cannot work with these kind of random margins, paddings, 
and that nothing is built in a design system way and we're gonna have some more designers go ahead and fill this in and standardize the whole project in the end. The next part is of course kind of the style guide itself. In Webflow you can clone this completely for free on our website by going to the uh, free resources uh, section on our website. So by going to free resources, you're gonna have the Webflow project kick Kickstarter style guide and you can clone this completely for free. You're gonna get the Figma and you're gonna get the Webflow part. On the Webflow part, you're gonna get, uh, first of all, the main temp template. So for every new page you're creating, you can just cl cl clone this out and create it like this. Here you're gonna have the main wrapper, uh, you're gonna have the navigation, you're gonna have the footer, and you're gonna have the sections you can go ahead and clone, cl um, like you can command C, command V in order to create a new section. So, uh, let me delete these because this is our core file, delete. And um, you're gonna have the 404 page set up by default if you forget something or you're working really, really fast on turning on the project. It's gonna be great that you have this set up. And same for the password protected page and all of them are gonna be inheriting the global styles of your project. Then you're gonna have the kickoff style guide, which is the core of everything, where you can basically mirror everything you have in Figma. So all of these styles in Figma, you're gonna be able to start your REPL project and have them inside of Figma and just make sure everything is running smoothly. So setting up the global font styles, kind of setting up all H4 headings, setting up uh, the rich text, because I, sometimes like you just forget setting up all the elements in rich text. And I feel that's pretty important to make the, your project kind of that much more polisher in the end. You have the kind of global classes. You're gonna notice some small differences between Figma and Webflow. And that is just because we're kind of creating a global class here. So you just have a, a text saying, okay, change the global parent class. And we're gonna be going and publishing weekly videos going every single one of these chapters one by one just making sure that you can go ahead and follow everything pretty easily like we're gonna be creating a chapter for figma we're gonna be creating a chapter for webflow and then just kind of explaining some of the concepts and maybe even kind of building some of the projects and seeing how that works and kind of showcasing our thought process in how we're doing it on our website by going to the lessons and guides you're gonna be able to go ahead and read everything i've just discussed in this video in a written format. You're gonna be able to see how we set up the typography and some some tricks and kind of tips and tricks we're doing on that side. How we're naming classes, how we're adding utility classes, what's our core structure, etc. etc. Uh, without further ado, please go ahead and kind of go down below the video and clone this on our website completely for free and send us an email to community at Flow Ninja and let us know what do you think about this style kit? Have you been using it on a project? If you've been using it in a project, feel free to send us over and we're, we're more than happy to provide feedback. But stay tuned for next week where we're going to be publishing the first chapter the week after that going a little bit more in detail in Figma. Clone the free resource down below and talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.